The Intel Modular Server isn't about bringing enterprise-class blade technology to SMB markets. It's about creating entirely new SMB opportunities with compute, storage, and management technologies that have been three and a half years in the making. Yes, Modular Server looks like a 6U high, 6-node blade system, but it's not. It's better. The Modular Server is built for simple, mostly toolless assembly and maintenance. Each of the system's six compute nodes features an Intel motherboard based on the 5000P chipset, enabling up to 32 gigabytes of ECC memory and support for a pair of Xeon processors up to the 5400 series, which feature a quad-core design with a 1333 MHz front-side bus. That's eight cores per module backed by two gigabit Ethernet ports, four with an optional mezzanine card, a PCI Express by 8 slot, and integrated remote management hardware. Rather than integrate storage into each server node, the modular server uses an active backplane to separate compute and storage resources. On one side, you've got up to six diskless server modules, and on the other side, you have a bank of hot swappable hard drives. Behind the backplane, the modular server's storage module provides the brains for all of this storage. The module integrates a SAS expander and hardware accelerated RAID controller, providing RAID levels from 0 through 60. Essentially, this is a SAS-based SAN contained within the modular server. System admins can create as many virtual drive volumes as they like and direct each server node to any given volume. If a server needs to be swapped out, simply remove the old node and insert the new one. The modular server automatically maps the replacement to the proper virtual drive. To have a RAID 5 partition on a typical 1U or 2U rack server, you need a minimum of three drives. With three servers, you're up to nine drives. You can do that with Intel's modular server with just three drives. And with the two and a half inch SAS technology option, you can do it less expensively. All storage within the modular server is managed remotely with Intel's bundled control software. Click the storage tab and you'll see an overview of the number of drives in the enclosure and how they're configured. Here you can see three 67 gigabyte SAS drives configured into a 60 gigabyte RAID 5 volume addressed by server 1 and a separate 10 gigabyte RAID 5 virtual drive addressed by server 2. From a total raw capacity of 204 gigabytes, about 99 gigabytes remains unallocated. Plus there's a fourth 67 gigabyte drive standing by as a global hot spare. To help admins visualize all of the relationships between the storage and compute resources, a storage layout map shows everything at a glance. If you were starting off a, an expandable system with fiber channel or iSCSI, there are so many technologies that you need to have under your belt and prepared to implement that Intel Modular Server has built in and already taken care of for you. Touring around the back of the modular server, you'll find the pair of hot swappable fan modules that perform most of the cooling for the six server nodes. By default, the modular server ships with one storage control module, one Ethernet switch module, and one management module. The Ethernet switch features 10 full duplex gigabit ports, all of which can be aggregated and assigned to virtual LANs. The management module provides all of the modular server's remote management capabilities, not to mention the data that fuels the virtual presence UI within the modular server control software. Now, you can add a second storage control module for redundancy, but there's another advantage. Each storage module features a mini four-lane external SAS port for connecting to an external RBOD enclosure and delivering more storage capacity to the compute nodes. Many RBODs feature two SAS ports. By adding a second storage module, you double the bandwidth between a densely populated RBOD and the modular server and load balance, maybe routing the first three servers through the first port and the other three servers through the second. Similarly, once you install the optional modular server mezzanine card, you can add a second Ethernet switch module for redundancy and more bandwidth. Each module features 12 internal gigabit ports, two per compute module you have port level redundancy to that switch. And then you add the, the optional mezzanine card and a second switch, and now you have switch level redundancy as well. But with two ports into each switch, you have port level redundancy, not only for load balancing, but for failover. And, and that's a big topic today, especially for people that are running virtualization solutions like VMware, Zen, Virtual Iron, and uh, the gamut continues. 
Finally, the modular server ships with two 1000 watt hot swappable power supplies and can hold up to four. You deploy these for n plus one redundancy, meaning that if you have two servers running with a total enclosure draw of say 600 watts, you could run comfortably from one power supply with a second redundant standing by. With all six servers in play, you would need three PSUs with a fourth redundant. Note that a basic modular server config ships with two power supply blanks. These actually have active electronics and fans that tie into the backplane, so don't let customers lose them. This brief overview should be enough to demonstrate how much ingenuity and potential there is in the modular server platform versus similarly configured 1U servers and ignoring benefits like remote manageability and integrated KVM over IP, modular server reaches price parity at under three servers and gets more advantageous with each server you add.